right, Leo, it's me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for August 2018. And Leo, before we jump in, there is an absolutely brilliant offer to learn astrology through September to November, 10 weeks at an absolutely discounted rate. So make sure you click in the description box down below, check it out, get signed up. I would love to learn with you. I've also got a video out, video out explaining everything, okay? All right, Leo, so just raise your hand if you are over eclipse season. <laughs> Plus, we've had all of this retrograde energy as well. And Leo, here's the thing. The truth is, is that in August, we're not out of the woods. We are not. Things get rolling and moving forward in September, so hold on to hope. And actually, what I would tell you is don't white knuckle your month. You don't need to do that. This is still a time of shedding, shedding, shedding. It just is. More importantly, it's a time of stepping into the past, right? And cleaning up, adjusting, re-looking at some things so that you can move forward. Now you get a brand new perspective and your brand new start with this new moon solar eclipse being in your sign and then we get to move forward eclipse season will be over now the effects of the eclipse will play out for about six months but leo we are on the way okay so before we get excited about september let's jump in here and walk through talk through august okay <clears throat> First and foremost, because we've got and had all of this eclipse energy that has had a lot of impact on you, I feel like there may be a place for you where you're you're kind of at a fork in the road for yourself, where you're trying to figure out what's the next direction? How do I want to show up to these things? What it, Which relationships, which people, places, and things don't fit in my world anymore? And you've been gathering the information to that. I hope you've been being wise with your time. Use it to gather information, research things, research resources, pay attention to the relationships in your life, pay attention how you're showing up to relationships so you can honestly see if they need to go forward. And the other thing, Leo, you are the heart sign. You've got to be paying attention to where you are not letting your voice and your heart be seen and known and where you're being afraid to let people, places, and things and opportunities in, okay? Be mindful of that. And you've got time to look at that, right? It's really such a lovely time of going, okay, how have I not been showing up and having my best experience so that you can gather the information? Because sometimes you have to see what's not right in order to move forward in a direction and a fashion that's better suited for you, okay? All right, so right at the beginning of the month here on the 6th, we've got Venus moving into the sign of Libra. She's very comfortable here. Libra is a Venus ruled sign. This moves into your third house. Now, the first thing I think of is first and foremost, social. We're being social. We're networking. We're communicating. Now, here's the trick. <laughs> Mercury is still retrograde as we come into this month in your sign. So you may have a lot that you want to convey, that you want to share, you want to speak out, you want to make decisions on. And it might not be coming out as clearly. It may not be being received as beautifully as you would like. Or maybe it's like, you see the vision of what you want in your head. You you see this and it's just not coming out exactly the way that you feel like it needs to. That's okay. Venus actually helpens, helpens, helps to smooth some of those harsh, harsh edges that are going on right now, okay? Now, the other thing I would tell you is if you are one of my students and you've been trying to study, you've really been trying to retain this information and it just feels like, ugh, this is a helper, okay? This is honestly a helper. It brings some harmony and you're gonna have this energy all the way until September. So you've got a month of working with this being here. And I think if you've gotta communicate in a relationship, this kind of helps that as well because it, it brings a bit of warmth to what you're saying and what you're hearing as well, okay? If you are trying to make decisions about your finances, also a great energy. I wouldn't make any big decisions before the 19th if you can, okay? On the 7th, we've got Uranus going retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Now, this is going to be at the top of your chart. So I'm telling you, I know that you are rethinking your past, your past career choices, your past relationships, your past desires of what you want to maybe do for work or your soul level calling. Um, I think there may be even a lot of reevaluation for you on um, where you've cached your own individuality. You know what I mean? Where do you need to go back to that creative piece? Where do you need to go back to being who you were? Where did you leave you off in order to find that coming forward? So, but here's the deal. I think the most important thing that we do with any of these retrograde energies is look to the past so we can see how to move forward better, okay? Now, when we get to the 11th, we've got this new moon 
partial solar eclipse that's happening in your sign. Now, the new moon of the month is a fresh new beginning, right? We plant our seeds of intention to begin something new here. Now, you're also going to want to watch the um, solar eclipse video that I have, and it's at the end of this video and also in my playlist, okay? Check it out because there's a lot that goes along with this, especially because Mercury is still retrograde in your sign as well, and these are in tandem. Now, one thing I think that it actually does for you is give you the opportunity to to have some, to present yourself differently to some opportunities in your life. Maybe it even begins over this next six months to draw in new opportunities for you. You meet new people. It could absolutely be a new romantic relationship, but there's this partnership energy that's coming in because you're shifting. These energies are in your sign, so you're shifting, and that naturally draws in the next cast of crew that's in alignment with your vibration, right? So there is the potential that is happening here based off of not only this energetic pull that happens, but also your reevaluation of what doesn't fit and where you wanna go. It kind of goes So it's a beautiful energy for you to be working with, okay? Now, when we get to the 12th, here's a cool thing to kind of keep in mind. Mars is still retrograde as we come into the month as well, and he is going to be retrograde in your partnership sector. So again, you are reevaluating re some um, actions you're taking, some why am I interacting in this relationship, right? Like where does my action and my desire in this relationship need to be different? But what's going to happen here on the 12th is that Mars is going to continue that retrograde and tip back up in there into Capricorn, okay? So now he's moved from this partnership space into a workspace, and we, he will be here until the 27th when he comes out of retrograde. So what this means is that first and foremost, because Mars is the warring planet, action, moving forward, oh, uh, I'm going to win. You have to figure out in your work sector how you're going to win, in your health sector, how are you going to win, in your daily routine sector, how are you going to win, what needs to be different in it, it is absolutely dependent on you, Leo. What are the actions you are willing to take to bring some bloom to this area of your life. It is a complete redirection energy we have been under. Use it well, use it wisely, apply it. And it doesn't mean, I wanna be clear about this, because you need to take some different actions, it doesn't mean that you like it. It doesn't mean that you want to do it. It means that things have been revealed to you that something is out of place. And while you may not like it, love it, or want it, it is still your responsibility to take a different action or learn a different action so that you can move forward, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, on the 19th, Mercury is going to come direct. Thank you very much. And we can get back to having some forward motion of conversation, communication, decision making, um, interactions with studying, all of these kinds of things come back online for us. But keep in mind that just because Mercury is coming direct on the 19th doesn't mean, boom, it's all over. He needs a couple days to resume his orbit and the shadow time doesn't actually end until the second. So there could still be a couple little blips that you're feeling in there. Now, the intensity of that, of course, will depend on your individual chart. So you're going to want to check that out, okay? Now, on the 23rd, we've got the sun entering Virgo, bringing some light, heat, life, and vitality to your second house, so go for it. On the 26th, we've got a full moon happening in Pisces. This is going to light up your eighth house. Now, let me just tell you about the sexy of this. Under all the reevaluation and the shedding, and I know you're tired of hearing that, but this is the real thing that's going on. This is the deepest, most intimate piece of your chart. So we've got a full moon happening here, right? And it says we're going to end something, acknowledge something, or adjust something. This is the place where you go, all of this that hasn't been working has got to go. And you prepare to let it go, acknowledge it, or adjust it. I'm telling you what you've learned, what you've gathered is getting ready to become applicable. I very much so use the analogy of the arrow. You know, when the archer is shooting, he's got to pull that, he or she has got to pull that arrow really far back, right? And this is where we are. We're in retrograde really far back so that it can fling forward. And that's what's been happening for you very specifically, okay? Now, on the 27th, we've got Mars turning direct right there in Capricorn, okay? You're going to have some forward motion in this area of your chart related to work, health, daily routines, service. And for some of you who have this particular interest or in your life, you could also see your small pets or animals start to act differently a little bit as well. So it's going to be a good month. 
Okay, I'm not even going to use the word patience with you because I'm so tired of that word. I can't even right now. And I'm a Taurus and I'm tired of that word. What I'm going to tell you is be flexible, stay flexible, stay open minded, be willing to see new information, be willing to look at your past from a different perspective, a useful perspective. Your past is the best asset that you have. Okay. All right, Leos, I hope to see you studying in Astrology 101 and 102, so click in the description box down below or visit me at stormygrace.com and have an absolutely fabulous month. Bye, guys.